What's going on, Facebookers? It's good to have you back on here. We are live again. It's on a beautiful Tuesday. Sitting here thinking about you guys, thinking about our game plan, thinking about our strategies, thinking about if you're keeping up with your competition. That's what we're thinking about. So, um, But welcome back to the show. Welcome back to your real estate investing talk show. Uh, excited to start this Tuesday off with some power because this is our week nine in our 24 week challenge. And I hope and I hope that you've been keeping up. Um, week nine is powerful because it's all about determining the market in which you want to be investing in and how do we understand that market. So a lot of you've asked me for that. So this is exciting for you guys. I'm excited for this. So uh, as you come on, say hi, say hello. It's important that we know you're with us. Um, it's important that we know you're on here. Um, we'll we'll um, we'll be taking some questions early. We'll be taking some questions out the gate. So you know, come on board, come one, come all, as I say, be part of the real estate investing talk show. Um, add your input, add your questions because this is for you. <laughs> this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. Okay. So uh, just know that, and um, we will uh, we'll be digging deep into this. We'll be digging it up. So excited to be doing the show today with you guys. Determining your market. That's a powerful one, right? Determining your market. How do you know you're in the right market for the right strategy? That's the bigger question, right? Um, the question isn't always, is there enough leads? The question isn't always, is there money? The question should start with, is how do I know what my market needs? And so that's going to be our big topic today. What does your market need? And so, so anyways, if you're just joining us, say hi, say hello, come on board, come one, come all, um, come to the show, come to the show. Um, it's important. I want to know who you are. I want to know you're on here. I want to know we're in it together to win it, right? In it together to win it. That's what's important. So, um, so yes, we have the lovely Jill and she's back. Say hi, Jill. You're on camera. Hello. <laughs> I don't even know where to look. I forget. <laughs> Which light? <laughs> so, um, yes, we have Jill back with us today. She made it through last week. We realized, you know, there's so much that you guys know she does, and so do we. And so we're happy to have her back, and everything is good and healthy with her. Um, so she's back on the Tuesday shows with us. It's a great thing. Uh, she'll be fielding questions for you guys, but um, but know this: that this is your live real estate investing talk show, and I am Zach Childress. I'm your real estate coach, and I'm a real real estate investor. So, welcome back to the show with you, Coach Zach Childress. This is the spot for you to come and you to learn how to grow your business. If you've been with me at all, you know we started this year off with a 24-week challenge, and we are in week nine of that 24-week challenge. So I hope you've been keeping up. Today's topic is about determining your market. How do you know which market is the right fit for you? How do you know to go into the market the right way? I hear, you know the two biggest questions I get from people in real estate that are just starting out? Jill, do you know what those two biggest questions might be? I'll let you see if you can figure that out. What do you think the two biggest questions I get? I think a lot of it would be about paperwork. Actually, that is the we don't get that at all. Really? No. Nope. Even though that is a huge fear that stops people from moving forward. Right. But they don't ask me that question. Money. There's two, money, yep. yep. One of them is most popular is money, 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 money right? Yep. The second most popular question is huh? leads. Yeah. Those are the two most popular questions I get. Where do I get the money and where do I get leads? But what it 
what it says to me is that somebody hasn't set you down enough to really help explain to you how this business works. The money and the leads are irrelevant in the beginning. What's relevant in the beginning is what we're going to be talking about today, determining your market. Because see, you can have all the money in the world, you can have all the leads in the world, but if you're trying the wrong strategy in the wrong segment of the market, it's never going to work for you, right? It's never going to work. So it's really understanding how do I pick the right market to move my business into? How do I pick the right market to demonstrate a strategy that's going to work congruently inside that market? That is why we're talking about this in week nine, so that you can get your business aligned and right the first time out. So, hey, if you're just joining us, say hi to me. Um, uh, say hello, say hello if you're brand new. Tell me you're brand new, I'd love to say hi to you. I'd love to see you in the chat box, you know, communicating, participating. I'm big on participation. Um, so I love it when you guys are, you know, commenting and telling me your questions. I want to answer some questions before we get the show started. Um, I'll, I'll leave another five or eight minutes or so for any questions that you guys might have so that we can get those out of the way. Um, also remember, do me a favor, share the message. Share it. Let people know what we're doing. Let people know, you know, what we're learning here. I bet you there's a lot of people out there that would um, love to learn what you're learning. They just don't know where or how to get to the information. So, um, what we got, Jill? So we have Michelle Brooks. She says, "Hey Zach, you met her out in L.A." Yes. Hey Michelle, welcome to the show. Stay with us. Lots of great stuff going on over here. Keisha says hello. Hey, Keisha. Uh, Jim says hello. Just signed up for your quick cash program. Awesome, Jim. Big high five, Jim. Pow. Way to go, Jim. Jeff, he says I'm in it to win it. He is actually a new student. Jeff, welcome to the family, my friend. Good to have you on here. We do these shows every Tuesday at 1.30 Eastern Time Zone. And we even have a Wednesday Dig Deeper show that we do at 1.30 Eastern Time Zone. So you don't want to miss those. Two shows coming to you out the gate every week. Every other Thursday, for those of you that have been following me and are curious about where we're going, every other Thursday we're going to start doing what's called In the Field with Zach. So you're actually going to be able to go out in the field with me, look at properties with me, ask questions. I'm going to ask you questions about what you would do to the properties so that it can be more interactive being out and seeing it being done firsthand from a real real estate investor. So we have Manny says, good to see you again, Zach. Manny! He said, love you. Uh, love you too, Manny. Susan said, glad to see you both. Meredith said, hello again. I missed seeing you guys last week. She's also a student. Um, now, Linda, she does have a question. She says, hi, Zach. What paperwork um, is used for HUD houses? Oh, <laughs> HUD houses, HUD store. It's a completely different beast. Okay, so HUD is a non-emotional purchasing process. And so you have to find an agent that understands HUD. You can't, you could go to HUD, but they're going to kick you to an agent. Um, and the agent has to understand how to submit your offer on HUD homes with the right HUD paperwork and the right HUD disclosures. It gets submitted. It uses a automatic underwriting review of contracts and it just kicks out the highest, whoever made the highest offers who wins it. That's really what it boils down to. So it's not about you going out and finding the paperwork. Paperwork. The key when I bid on HUDs is finding the right agent that understands how to submit offers to HUD. So that would be my best advice to you. Kevin, he says, hello, Zach and Jill. Can't wait for you guys' discussion today. Awesome, Kevin. Happy to have you back, Kevin. Uh, he's actually a basketball player over in... Um, Tuscaloosa, right? No, Europe. Oh. He's a student. Oh, I thought we had a guy that came out that was doing sports in Tuscaloosa. That's Corey. Corey. Corey, yeah. is it Blank? Banks? Harris. Harris. Corey Harris, yeah. So then Mona says, hello, Zach and Jill. Always learning. Awesome, Mona. Uh, Manny, he says, question. Zach, can you do a class about lean abatement? Is it possible? Um, I can. Um, it's not in the 24-week challenge, but I will write it down. 
James says, if we were in Alabama, can we stop in and visit? <laughs> I mean, you're more than welcome to stop. I'm not sure if everybody else is going to stop for you to entertain you. <laughs> yeah. So, Charlie said, laugh but, out loud. Nope. <laughs> but, I mean, I would recommend you calling in, and if you wanted to come and actually sit down with a student advisor, you know, call in, set a time, um, come in, sit in the boardroom, talk to a student advisor, and um, and, and see if, if that's your right angle. Pinning me down might be a little difficult. I'm in and out and around and about and all over the place so um you know that's something that uh, you would just need to talk to a student advisor um uh, about that really you'd probably want to talk to our uh carly and see how that would unfold for you but yeah we're here man we're we're all about it it's just you know we got i mean people aren't just hanging around on couches around here you know <laughs> so we've had people that stopped in before and they come in and sit in the the foyer and you know, they're like, well, why is anybody? Well, we're busy. Like, you just showed up unannounced. You know, it doesn't work that way. So, and Michelle says, good morning, Zach and Jill. Hey, is it warm enough in your room now? Yes, Michelle, it is. <laughs> Michelle, you met him at um, L.A. as well. He was the Canadian. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him. Yep. Yeah. Are you laughing at my people? <laughs> no. I, what you laughing at my people for? Uh, all right. What we got? All right, so it is about time. You got about three minutes before we got to go. What does Ariana say here? Uh, she said, "Hello, Zach and Jill. Happy to be here again and to learn more from you." Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we're, let's rock this show out today, guys. I'm glad I had some time with you here. Listen, I want all of you right now to type in the chat box, I'm a winner. If you're a winner, type it in. I want to know who is on here that believes truly you're a winner. Because being a winner is the first stages to achieving success in life. Because you got to want it. you got to believe that you're a winner already. And through the right training, the right support, and the right systems, you unfold that winner mentality in you so you know type that in go in there type that in I'm a winner 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 that's awesome that <laughs> is awesome there they come I'm a winner I'm a winner I love it you guys are all winners in my book if you're on this show and you've been following me on this show every single week at 1 30 Eastern time zone you're all winners you're putting in the time, you understand? You're putting in the commitment. You're putting in what you need to do to build what you need to build. I absolutely love you guys for being on here, being part of this journey, and participating in your future. I think it's tremendous value for you to be able to be engaged that much. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, sets you apart from the other 66% of people that won't make it. You're putting the time in. You're, you're making the effort happen. So I love that. So... Is that Elena on here? Yes, sir. Oh, Elena. Oh, Elena. So. Give her an air hug. Air hug. Ugh. Yeah, I went to, what was it? Oh, I went to reach Delirious. around her to hand somebody something, <laughs> and she hugged me then. I was like, oh. And then I did it again, she hugged me again. I was like, oh, two hugs. <laughs> uh, Manny says, hey, guys, Tampa is coming. Let's jump on it. I'm a winner. Never give up. That's right. Tampa is coming up. That is right. That is right. Tampa <laughs> is coming up. We'll talk about that. Hey, if you're brand new to this and it's your first time on here and you're trying to figure out, well, what do I need to do to even get a deal done? I highly recommend you get a copy of my book. Um, uh, anybody who has it is giving great reviews. Uh, we can't keep it on the shelf. It flies off the shelf. You can get it on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and search My First Deal Playbook, and it'll pop up. Get a copy of it and um, use it, use it, use it in your business. So... Um, all right, let's get going here. So today is week nine of our 24-week challenge. And in week nine, we're going to pull the curtains back on one thing that most of you don't do, and that is determining your market and how to find the right markets. And so this is really the foundation of the growth of your business. It's the foundation of where you're going to move your business or what marketing you're going to do or what strategy you're going to deploy. And that foundation really starts with understanding market research, okay? 
And what is market research? Well, market research is determining who's your buyer in your market. Who's, who's, you know, what are the properties that are being moved the most? We call it the avatar of a property. Um, uh, so I think that that's important to understand is when you look at it from that point of view is instead of making it a guessing game, how about make it a realistic strategic game okay if you're with me on being strategic just give me a thumbs up or something like that so i know you you understand what strategic means versus just doing it with hopes you're going to succeed right we're I always say we're not in the hope business we're in the do business right we're in the do business so if you if you got that make sure you get them thumbs up going so, so what would be, you know, the idea of saying, I'm going to go out and pick a market. How do I pick a market? Well, the beauty is, is it's easier done than you think. Most people don't do it because of two reasons. Number one, they don't have the understanding of how to do it. Or number two, they don't want to put the time in to do it. Okay. And that's a big thing that we see all the time. So the first thing you got to understand is, is the time. So let's talk about the time. So when it comes to researching a market, yeah, you're going to have to put some time in. And so you need to understand that that time you're putting in to research that market is going to give you greater value in the back end because now you're not just hoping, but you're being strategic about the doing of the business. Okay. Um, and that requires research. So you need to be using sites like CNNMoney.com. CNNMoney.com is a great resource because it'll tell you like, like, you know, what are the best places to live? It'll tell you average income rates in most markets. It'll tell you, you know, all types of information, like the top 10 cities that, you know, the millenniums are moving into to give you an idea of where kind of like migration is happening. From there, you want to start to pin down certain markets. Um, and those markets are where you move into what's called zip code data, right? I want zip code data. I absolutely want zip code data. Here's why, because a market can be very large. You might pick Atlanta and imagine the size of Atlanta, right? Do you want to market the same strategy in all of Atlanta? No, you don't. You know, there's certain strategies that will work better in certain segments of Atlanta versus other strategies. And, and the unknown to that is, is you don't know unless you do your research, right? And so if I was going to pick Atlanta, I think there's something like 46 zip codes in Atlanta. You need to go online and you need to download what's called a zip code map. Okay, this map will lay out the city in which you're looking at with all the different zip codes and the and the and the boundary lines for each zip code. That's the first starting step. So now you have a map specifically on the zip codes. And so now it allows you to start going out and acquiring zip code data, the data based on each zip code, its performances, its lack of performance, its, you know, avatar for a property, what price range you need to be in, who's the buyer, the majority buyer in that zip code. So it starts to give you a picture of the zip code. And what, and I know what some of you are saying, yeah, but Zach, some zip codes, you know, you have night and day in, in neighborhoods and that's fine. We're going to get to that in a minute um, because that's called clustering. But to get an idea, we start with a zip code map. Now, can that take a lot of time? <laughs> None. It's so easy. <laughs> it's super easy. <laughs> if you have the right agent on your team, it can be. But it does take some time, guys. Like, it really does. It's the commitment to your business, right? It's you committing and saying, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it right the first time. I'm going to put the time and energy in, and I'm going to make sure that I'm strategic about my business model. And and that's what we're doing here. If you think about it, we're running a business. Yeah, we're, we're flipping houses and selling contracts and renting properties, but we're really running a business, okay? Um, and you need to think of it from that point of view and you need to kind of take a back step and say am I just being reactive or am I being proactive and am I thinking with the end in mind you see how I hooked yeah. our dig deeper Wednesday in on that <laughs> you got to think about that stuff okay 
And um, and what that means is is this: when you really understand and look at this from a point of view that says. Um, I'm going to be more strategic about this. I'm going to do the research. I'm going to make sure that I get the research done. Then you're going to start creating a clear focus and a clear objection to where you're moving into. So zip code information. What's some ideas behind zip code information? So if I'm going to build a zip code data sheet, I need to know, I need to create an Excel sheet, right? I need to have an Excel sheet. And on that Excel sheet, I need to have every single zip code down one column. Okay, and then what I need is um, uh, I need to have start to put my fields across the top. That's going to be number. The first column needs to be how many houses have actually sold in the last 12 months um, in that zip code. Uh, I really wish I could bring this mic up. It's probably going to sound really rough right now. Oh, looky there. Looky there. I'm figuring out how to operate my own stuff. Well, while you're uh, raising that, I just want to give a shout out to Miss Patty. Uh, she was a student here, and she has closed on her very first property this morning. Way to go, Patty! So she's going to call me after the show. I'm going to get all the details. I know just closed this honest. morning on the first property. Hats off to my REI success team. Way to go, Patty. Everybody go like Patty's comment. Give her a thumbs up. That's awesome. Working with the team, man. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. And she did her, I want to point out, she did do her zip code research. Oh, I'm sure she did. I'm sure she did. Show Patty some love. That's what happens when you put the right team around you guys. That's what happens, okay? Way to go, Patty. Big thumbs up to you, my friend. Big thumbs up. So um, so where was that? Market research. Zip codes. So the first column needs to be how many houses have sold in the last 12 months per zip code okay per zip code so you're going to see some zip codes where they have you know 1200 houses sold in the last 12 months you're going to see some zip codes where 100 houses have sold in the last 12 months and the reality is is that's all useful information okay it's all useful information it just helps you get a guideline of you know what's the activity level so you know and who's the buyer types so when you look at that, you then want to move over to, once you know how many houses have sold in the last 12 months, you then want to identify um, what's the average sales price per zip code. And I'm going to tell you why. What's the average sales price per zip code? Meaning in each one of the zip codes, what's the average price of a house being sold in that zip code? And here's another thing. You also want to look at each zip code and what city they lie in. So let's say in Atlanta, the average sales price is 175000 And then one of my zip codes that is in Atlanta is selling at 350000 Well, that's a red flag for me, okay, because I want to cater to the majority of the buyers in the market. And if the majority of the buyers in the market are buying at that 175 price range, why do I want to go jump in, especially if I'm brand new, into a market where I'm trying to you know, secure properties and sell them for 250, 300, 350? I decrease my buyer pool. Whether I'm selling a contract or if I'm fixing and selling a property, I decrease my buyer pool. So it becomes harder. So what you're trying to identify is that you want to play in zip codes that are equal to or less than the sales price per city. So if the sales price is 175 and the zip code I'm looking at, its average sales price in that zip code is 145, that's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? Um, so that's just the first tidbit. So I want to identify all those. The second thing I want to do is I want to identify what's the average days on market in that area you know, each zip code. Okay. The other things I want to do, and I'm not going to keep going on and on about this. You know, I got about another 20 minutes or so with you, but I want you to also identify who's your buyer pool. So how does that work? I want to go to my agent and I want to say, look, this zip code sold a thousand houses in the last 12 months. How many of those houses were sold to a retail buyer? 
meaning someone getting financing. Okay, how many of those were sold to someone getting financing? And let's say out of those thousand houses, 700 of them were sold to a finance buyer and 300 were sold to a cash buyer. Well, then that tells me in that zip code, the lion's share of the buyer pool is what? It is my financed buyer. So I need to cater to that buying pool. Now, let's say the next zip code was 600 houses were sold in the last 12 months, but 400 of them, let's just say, were sold to cash buyers and 200 to finance. Well, there again, I need to cater to that cash buyer pool, so I'm going to wholesale contracts there. Let's say you've got a market where it's 800 houses have sold in the last 12 months, and 500 of them sold to finance buyers, and say 300 of them sold to cash buyers. Well, that number says I could really do both, but I wouldn't. And here's why. Because the cash buyer percentage is so close to the retail buyer percentage, then that means there is a ton of competition amongst those guys that are buying contracts or fixing and flipping properties to get to that, that, that buyer pool. It's almost balanced out. So therefore, I'm not going to go in there and try to compete to fix and sell properties because my competition might be trying to just dump and drop prices. So I'm just going to sell contracts into that segment of the market to those wholesalers. So this is the strategic side of it so that you move your business ahead of time before you start trying to wholesale in an area because you think it's great. No, know what you're doing moving into it by getting this data, uh, getting this research together, understanding clearly how this works. Because once you do that zip code information, then you can move into what's called clustering. You can start to take that zip code and break it into a map and then put in the avatar property that you're looking for. For instance, if I know that that zip code selling for 150,000, well then I can put the avatar in that says I'm looking for houses from 75,000 to 150 in this zip code that have sold in the last six months. That's a three two, 1400 square feet or greater. And what it will do is it will show me all the clusters inside that zip code where the activity's at. That's what I'm trying to get to. And the other reason that it does that is for all the people that are watching this saying, yeah, but in my zip code, you got a half a million dollar house and you got $200,000 houses. Well, what that does for me is it, it allows me to eliminate and push out all those subdivisions that are selling for half a million to a million dollars that doesn't need to be calibrated inside this clustering map. And so that's huge. This is something that we teach heavily at our three-day event. We teach this strategy right out the gate at our three-day event. Anybody who's been there and has seen me teaching this will tell you it's literally a game changer. Um, in talking about that, we do have an event coming up. I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you a little bit about that, and here's why. Because it will sell out. We sell out of all of our VIP tickets. Um, we haven't even opened up the gold tickets yet. Those sell out very quickly. But I'm, I'm letting you know literally like two months ahead of time. More than that. Yeah. I'm letting you know like three months ahead of time to secure your spot. Um, we are coming to Tampa. I think we have a little bit of a video that we can roll on that. Um, uh, you might want to see it. It's pretty awesome video. So um, if you haven't seen it, you probably want to see it um, because it will demonstrate what others are saying about the event. I want to see it. You want to see it? I do want to see it. I want to see it. Well, let's roll it. I don't know if he has it up. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> he said I got it up. What did he say? <laughs> I don't know. So, if we have it up, we'll roll it. <laughs> I've been to another couple of workshops myself. I have to admit, Zach brings a lot more knowledge, information, and the experience that he brings into this workshop is, is phenomenal. It's, it's life-changing. This is actually my first training of anything in real estate, and I already feel like you now I have a step ahead of someone that would be starting you at another workshop. You know, just so informative. Any questions that anyone has, Zach is there to answer them. So, you know, it's, I've learned a, a ton, much more than I thought it would. 
My favorite thing is probably the family atmosphere that they have here. Dak is uh, very much a family guy. He talks about his family a lot and is very known among his coaches as well, just how inclusive he is of, of everybody. It's, it's been very exciting to meet a lot of people and also to see how powerful Zach's programs are. So uh, if you're thinking about coming, this is a great place to get some of the, the bottom line best advice. Not as much of a leap of faith when you see, when you have, you see Zach and you see all the other people that have been through the same workshop and their success. It's a little more comforting seeing that and it makes it a lot easier to make that leap. It's been an eye-opening experience. I'm a skeptic. I walked in here a skeptic because I've been through these events before. To listen to them, and it's a different vibe here. Um, you feel that Zach is a real deal. He has the background where most of these so-called gurus are here to just throw product at you. His system's a more hand-on. Thank you for the excitement. Um, thank you for revitalizing that in me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for caring. Thanks, Zach. You're the man. Great going, Zach. You're truly changing lives more than you actually know you are. What do you think, guys? I'm over here watching it myself. I get so excited about it. <laughs> Miss Gloria says I'm already signed up. <laughs> Did she really? That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching myself, like, watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, get, I get so, like, drawn into these videos. <laughs> Because, like, it, it, these are people that are sharing their story and I'm not there, right? So they're sharing it with Jill and Justin. And, um, and so I get to see that. And, it, and it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding to know that you're putting your heart and soul into this training. And this is what people are saying about it. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I, I just I, I think it's just absolutely awesome. And, um, and that's what I want you to experience. I want you to experience the same thing that they've experienced. And, and look, I get it. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of noise, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you got to understand, like people wouldn't say what they say. You wouldn't be able to come on the Facebook live shows and me here doing this and the people coming on and saying, um, what they're doing. I mean, we have people on here already. Uh, Meredith said, need to get signed up. Yes, you do, Meredith. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, it's Tampa. I'm giving you plenty of head start on this, okay? Plenty of head start to get you secured and get you um, ready to go into June on fire, right? So, um, so with that said, we've been talking about your market. We've been talking about determining the market for you. And I think that that's a big aspect of your success. It's the reason it's one of the things that I teach um, at the three-day event on really how to look at all the different angles, the websites, um, how to gather all this data, how to put it together so that you understand your zip code matrix and, and really what the mapping is for and then how to start taking those zip codes and drilling those zip codes down into clustering zones. I mean, that's very, very, very important. There's sites out there that you should pay attention to and really kind of get on and do do some research. One of them is MGIC. Um, the reason MGIC is important is it's a mortgage guarantee insurance corporation. It's the company that puts insurance together for mortgages. And so they have a lot of great data for you out there. There's another one called PMIgroup.com. You might want to research them and um, just the thing is, is gathering data. The more data you gather, the better you're going to understand your market. Okay. Um, 
And some of you might have this book. I, I, I'll give you a little bit of a uh, jump start. If you have my business blueprint book, that is the 24-week model that we're going through. Um, and so you might, if you want it or if you've received it somewhere, you might want to be following along with that as well. Um, I highly recommend that you do that. So, um, you know, some other ways of segmenting a market to give you an idea. This is another little ninja trick. Um, um, we use list source, and I've used list source for years and years and years. And why is list source so powerful? Because let me explain something to you. I can go to list source, and I can pick a market like Atlanta, Georgia, and I can say to Atlanta, Georgia, hey, look, I want to pull all the foreclosures, the 30, 60, 90 day late foreclosures that are happening in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, listen, follow me. I can then acquire that list. And then I can itemize that list by zip codes and I can do what's called a zip code sum. And then I can identify which zip codes are having the highest foreclosure rates. So I know that those are areas that have a high need for a solution. That's one way, right? I can also go in there and do the same type of list filtering and aggregation for like landlord purchases. And I can pull that list and itemize it by zip code so that I can identify which zip codes are identifying the most purchases for landlords. You with me? The other side of it is, is looking at some type of cash buyer database. I can go into a cash buyer database. We offer one for our coaching students and I can pull all the cash buyers in that market, say Atlanta, and I can go itemize those cash buyers by zip code so I can identify where the majority of the cash buyers are buying at. All of this stuff and all this resource and all these tools allow us to strategically plan our approach into a market first, okay? Not just let's go market, but let's research, let's identify, let's find the needs. Let's look at this from a point of view of saying, if I'm going to go here, I want to have the highest and most effective results that I can get from moving into this market. And the sad part really is that most people don't ever do this. They don't do it. And, and listen, and this is the, probably the only time I'm going to ever say this to you as my, my students, my followers, is that that's not your fault. <laughs> You'll never hear me say that no, again, no. okay? <laughs> but it's not your fault. And the reason I say that is because you've never learned it, right? No one's ever taught you. And you might be one of these students that I have that follow me that's been to 15 other seminars and bought other you know, systems and tools or maybe even a coaching program out there that you just felt like didn't give you the, the value that you wanted. At the end of the day, you got to let go of all that. And you got to start identifying, I'm not quitting. Obviously, you're not a quitter. Type in the box right now, I'm not a quitter. Just type it in there. If you've ever been to a seminar, have ever invested in something that didn't work out for you, and you're still here today, still learning, showing up, trying to figure this business out, then I want you to type in, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. Type it in. Own that phrase because you're not a quitter. Listen, do you think there's business adventures that I go into that I spend a lot of money for that don't always work out? Absolutely. But it doesn't stop me from moving forward. You understand? I move forward at all costs. I'm not a quitter. Okay? So you type that in. Own that phrase. I'm not a quitter. Own that. Okay? It's important that you own that. Okay? You're a winner and you're not a quitter. That's what I'll tell you. And, and that's what brings us to today, right? You're here. You've been following. A lot of you have been following me for over a year on our live shows. And, you know, and I'm so blessed that I have so many of you that follow me for as long. And, you know, the stories that come from this show, I'm just, I'm blessed, honestly. And, um, and I think that's the value here, right, is that you get to come every week and learn. You get to come every week and be part of our 24-week challenge. We're on week nine, right? You guys are sticking this out. You're making it happen. You're becoming winners in your life, in your education, in your learning process to grow your real estate business, to develop you as a business person, to succeed at this because – this is why you do this, right? You do this to not look backwards, but to look forward at all costs. And part of looking forward is finding the tools or the information or the knowledge that you lacked in the past that 
was part of the reason you didn't succeed, right? And, and own that, you know, own that. You know, I always say to, you know, in my life, people say, Zach, you still have mentors? Absolutely, I still have mentors. You know, but, you know, I hire a mentor to get me so far. M my level of mentors grow as I grow. You know, and there's different levels of coaches right out there. You have, you know, the coaches that help new people understand a model or a business. Then you got coaches that are really there to inspire people. And then you got coaches that are there to really dig down and get into the essential aspects of things and the technology and the systems and the processes, calling it a scalability type coaching, right? And, and that's, you know, as we grow, we look at it. Sometimes we just need motivation. We need somebody telling us we can do it. We need somebody telling us that we're strong. We need somebody telling us, you know, that we're winners to get us out of that old mindset that we've been in or lived in that held us back from the success that we're supposed to be living. And that's a mindset shift, right? That's a mindset shift. You know, that's like one of the things we're going to end this year with, which you guys are going to be blown away about this, is we're, we're, gonna, we're only going to have – two more three-day events, and then we're done with the three-day events this year. But we're going to do an end of the year called Freedom Summit. Ooh, that name just sounds good, right? A Freedom Summit. And this Freedom Summit is going to blow your minds. It's going to not just have me there, but all my partners. It's going to have marketing specialists, commercial specialists, creative financing specialists that are there to just teach you and help you grow your business to a whole nother level. That's why we're going to end the year with it. It's called the Freedom Summit. Um, it's going to be a mind change. It's going to shift you to understanding, yes, look, I know what it takes to do this, but this is the whole next level of things, right? Freedom Summit, write that down, ask questions about it. It's important. You know, for all of my people that are typing in, I'm not a quitter. I love you guys. You're probably the same group that said I'm a winner. So I think it's amazing once we start to put it out there, we start to believe and we start to receive, right? We were talking about this in our training this morning about, you know, visualizing your success as if you're already living in it before it ever happens. It's called manifestation. And some of you might think, ah, oh, that's kind of crazy. Well, I could tell you some really crazy things that are going on in this world that would blow your mind. Um, but manifestation of your life is a real thing, my friends. It is a real thing. And you start to change your thoughts, you'll change your life, right? You start to change the position in which you see the world, you'll start to receive things different from the world. You you start to look at yourself in a, in a higher level than where you think you are, you will start to live at that higher level. You start to look at your friends and associates and business partners and start to say, look, how can they influence me in a positive way? You will start to change the circle of your friends. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. You've got to want it, though. You've got to want this type of training. You've got to be willing to go do this research that we've been talking about today. You've got to be willing to put that time in and that effort in. And you've got to be willing to say, I will do whatever it takes to make this business work and live the life that I want. That's the game changer. It has nothing to do with what's out there. It has everything to do with you. And are you willing to drop your ego long enough to say, I need help. I need help. And I need to find where I can get that help. And let me tell you something. I'm willing to give an olive branch to you. I'm willing to say, talk to someone in my student advisor team. Come to my three-day event. Learn what we're doing. Learn what we're teaching others. See the difference. See, feel the difference. Be around people that actually enjoy what they're learning. Put yourself in that position and you'll succeed. You absolutely will succeed. I say it all the time. Get the right support, stay focused, and commit to this thing, and you'll make it. But the only person that's in charge of that is you. 
And that's called willpower. Do you have the will to keep moving forward at all costs? Are you going to get slapped in the face? Yes. Are you going to, is life going to hit you? Yes. Are your bills going to keep coming in? Yes. Is the drama in your life going to be there? Yes. But it's you that can control how you let that influences you. So I encourage you to take that challenge. Understand that knowledge is the easy part. Controlling your mind is the hard part. Uh, controlling the walls that you put up to stop the negative in is the hard part. That's the side you have to work on daily is being in that position to say, I refuse to allow myself to believe the lies that the fear in me tells me. You understand that? My trainer said something great to me the other day. I've always looked at fear as false evidence appearing real. And, um, and he, said, he called it something else, and I just loved it, and I didn't write it down. Um, I should have wrote it down for you, but it was so powerful. Um, faith endures all something. Um, it was so different than what we always say fear is an acronym for, and um, I'll have to dig it up. But it was it was more meaningful about what fear really is. And, and I'm here to tell you that the only reason that people don't do what they want um, when it comes to fear is because the fear is what sets in because you don't have the ability to visualize your journey. Because here's why. It's the lack of faith that you have in your in where you're going that creates that fear because you can't see it yet because you can't see it you understand so if you can't see it then you don't you you're you're afraid you're fearful but if you have the ability to receive it and see it and visualize it you start to create that faith that it's going to work because you are going to work it and that happens with help. That happens with support. That happens with encouragement. That happens when you put yourself with the right team that can guide you down that path. Woo! Let me get that out today. Man, I was going a little deeper on you. I usually save those for Wednesdays. But I felt like you might need to hear that today. There's somebody that probably received that. If you receive that, just type in, I receive it. Type it in. Type in. I receive it, Zach. I receive it, Zach. I receive it. So, Jeff, the name of that website was called List Source. List Source. Well, I just saw it over here. So, I'm just loving all these hearts and thumbs up coming across the screen. I'm waiting to see who receives it. I want to know who's receiving the Keisha. message today. Keisha has definitely received it. She says, I can do this. I just need some direction. I signed up. How Yay! Do I get the, business, the business blueprint book. We don't sell it, Keisha. We raffle them off here and there. I don't even know how many more we got of these things. Did we even print more of them? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's a discontinued item for us. <laughs> so um, I gave a whole bunch away during our Christmas celebration. So um, I don't think we have it anymore. So Michelle, he says, I got drawn in too about the video earlier. He says, you're so pumped up that going slow is not an option. No sloths and REIs actually. Zach Childress, REI Success Academy. Listen, man, we're excited where REI Success Academy is going. We're excited yeah. about the new things we're doing for you guys. We're excited about the lives we're going to touch. You know, my goal this year was to help change 10,000 lives. I think I'm going to blow it away, which tells me next year my goal needs to be much higher. You guys know my goal in life is to help more people this year than I did last year, to help more people next year than I did this year, and I think I set my goal way too low. I really do. I think next year my goal needs to be I, I need to be on a mission to affect, touch, and help change 100,000 people next year. 
because I'm going to smoke my goal this year. You know, that's a 10 times factor, right? Um, and I think that's, you know, with your help. It, it all it comes from you guys, you know. I can only communicate to so many people. And I think through your help and sharing our message and putting it out there and, and telling people about it, you help me in so many ways to reach more people and help them understand there's a better way, there's a different approach, and they can get there if they try. Uh, and I'm just blessed that you guys are helping me get there. So, Patrick, he said, I received it, but I need to receive some money to start our partnership. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to add that in there, Patrick. Why you always got to throw something in like that? Just, I receive it. That's all you need to say. Anytime you say something of positive, I receive it, and then you add the word but in there, you basically erased everything you just said. Yes. So, I receive you, Patrick, and you need to receive me, okay? Face everything and rejoice. Love it. Yep. We have, um, let's see, Tom says he received it, Zach. Jeff says he received it. Gloria says I received it. Thank you. Meredith says preach it, Zach. I received it. I needed it today. Ariana said I received it, Zach. Gracie, she says I received it, Zach. Uh, Michelle, he said, or, sorry, she says, I received it. Thank you. Mona gives hearts. Talon says, I received it, Zach. Jim says, I receive it. Susan Love says, you guys. Love, Love you guys. guys. Carol says, I received it. Zach. Love you guys. James says, I received it. Uh, Sheika says, received it. Manny says, you're going to be 3.0 and 10 times faster. <laughs> Love it. Uh Patty, she says, commit to changing your goal. Uh, go big, not low. Zach's the man. Oh, man, you guys are great today. You guys are great today. I love it, guys. You're so active today. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> That's what I love about this community. Do you understand? That's why I love this community. You guys are so in this. You guys have been starving for something like this. Somebody that can come to you every week and share a message and be here with you. This is what you need for your soul. You understand? And I need you for my soul. I have way too much information in my head and I got to get it out. <laughs> I got to get it out, man. <laughs> so I need you guys to receive it so I can get it out, right? Um, so I think it's a win-win both ways. Just share the message, though. That's my biggest thing is share, share, share this message. I think that is by far the biggest thing that I could ask anybody to do. Oh, did Patrick come back on here? Yeah, he said, I receive, I receive you, Zach, all the time. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I do have a question for you. All right, what we got? Gloria, she says, Zach, a person that I know is going to walk away from her parents' house. They're both dead. She said that the house is underwater. I'm interested, so how should I approach it? Well, first, she inherited the house? Yes. That her friend did? Yes. Okay, so as long as she's inherited the house, then that's great. But she's now saying that she now has an asset that's basically worth less than what is owed on it right okay so the question is you got to figure out what is that you know what i mean what is that because here's why she's going to lose the house right i mean ultimately if she can't keep up with the payments but she might be able to keep up with the payments she might be able to rent it out and stabilize it in the next 15 to 20 years you know the the debt on it would go down and then she could then eventually reposition it or and stabilize it or if she doesn't want to have to do anything with it i've done these deals myself many times you have to do a seller financing structure on that deal um you have to figure out first you got to figure out are there any arrearages anything owed on it any the, any you know penalties back payments to see what it would take if it was going into foreclosure to clean it up but if it's not going into foreclosure then you just need to be realistic about what is it short you know does she owe 200 and it's worth 175 well that's an easy deal that's a $25,000 shortage I would go in and I would sell or finance that deal in, either through a sandwich lease option or a subject to, and I would just basically write the note that says that I'm willing to pay whatever the, the payoff amount is on this property in 15 years. 
which means I step in. I don't care if it's upside down. I'm going to take over the payment on the property. I'm going to actually rent it out and I'm going to stabilize it. And I have a 15 year term, which means I got 15 years of that principal balance getting paid down to move it from a $200,000 debt to probably a $100,000 debt over 15 years. And in 15 years, it's probably going to go from 175, let's say 225. Now I've made myself a margin of $125,000 on that deal over a 15 year period with the ability to absorb cash flow until it stabilizes. That is being creative with a deal. That's how I would structure that. Love those deals. Love them. Because most people don't know how to do them and they walk away from them. Right. And most sellers don't even realize that they, you know, somebody can help them, so they let them go. And those deals can be intimidating if you don't know. They absolutely can be intimidating because it's the it's the communication with the seller to, to let them know, hey, look, I can do this, but this is how we have to do it for me to take on a property that's upside down. Right. So... Ariana, she says, even though I'm, it might have hurt, let go of your past failures. I'm not a quitter. Thank you, Zach and team. You're welcome, Ariana. Patty, she says, been down all those roads and decided there is a reason why they got washed out. This is why I'm here. I will succeed with you and the team. That's right, Patty. You already are, Patty. She's done amazing. You're already succeeding, so just keep on kicking. Listen, Patty, here's the reality. You just signed up. You just closed the deal this morning. You're already succeeding from our help and being in the family and getting the coaching. You're already on your way. Just keep that momentum strong. She, uh, she is actually somebody who, who was very worried about her financial stability as well. So um, she's, she's done a really great job. I'm really proud of yeah. her. Um, Keisha, she says, how do I get the business blueprint? Oh, I just asked you that. Um, I just read all that out for you. Then we have Miss Gloria. She says, would you please help me? I promise to make it worth your while. Oh, Gloria, I get told that all the time. You should have made your eyes at the camera. You know what makes it worth my while? When I just get to hang out at the house with the kids. That's what makes it worth my while. She should right. call a student advisor. And oh, absolutely. How. All right, what else we got? We got to wrap this show up today. Hey, everybody's gone. gone the, would you? Oh, there we go. She doesn't want. Oh, Gloria says she doesn't want the house. Then I just told you the exact strategy to deploy on that, Gloria. You need to be at my three-day event, Gloria. That's where you need to be, Gloria. This is your conscious talking. Sign up for the three-day event, Gloria. <laughs> makes me. You just said Gloria. And it makes me want to sing that song, Gloria. Gloria, you know from the 80s? <laughs> yes, I do know. So, um, anyways, you guys have been good today. Lively group today. Remember, we're week nine. What's week nine all about? Determining your markets. Getting your markets picked. I gave you some, some homework there. Told you what to go do. Told you how to do it. Gave you some websites. Told you what to do. Now it's up to you whether you do it or not, right? So, hey, listen, if, if, you're, if you want to get pre-registered for the event in Tampa, get it going. Call a student advisor, 707-247-4248. Pick up the phone. Call a student advisor if you need some help. You want to ask some questions about how we can help you, call a student advisor. If you haven't gotten a copy of my book, you need to do that. How do you do that? You go to Amazon. You can go to Amazon. You can uh, search My First Deal Playbook. You'll find it there. It's all also on Barnes and Nobles. You can find it either one of them, Barnes and Nobles or Amazon. Um, we're there. We're live. We got the book going. It's flying off the shelves. I encourage you all get a copy of the book. Uh, bring it to the event in Tampa. I'll sign it for you. Uh, that's a powerful thing. And just get to the event. Remember, get to the event, get to the event, get to the event. That is something that I encourage you all to do. Um, so uh, feeling excited and ready. She says, Gloria says she already signed up. Keisha <laughs> Look at Keisha. <laughs> I love it. Keisha, making moves. I like it, Keisha. <laughs> Getting deals happening. There you go, Gloria. Get that deal under contract and then wholesale that contract over to Keisha. 
She wants the deal, Gloria. Make you some money real quick, Gloria. Get it done, Gloria. That's what I love about this community. I love you guys, man. Meredith. Love you. Meredith, she said, so glad I got to join it. Join it. Renewed my heart and soul. Good job, Meredith. That's what we're here for, right? So, hey, anyways, guys, you know I love you guys. Thanks for participating. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for being active with us today. Remember, share the message. Get it out there. Let other people know what we're doing. Get them on the Facebook. Let them see it for themselves. And at the end of the day, this journey is up to you, whether you participate in it or not. That's your choice. The choice is yours. This is Zach Childress, your real real estate investor and your real real estate coach. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the Dig Deeper Show. Bye now.